Good morning. Welcome to our online worship with, as always, our great appreciation to Guy and Chloe for making it possible. As we continue to mourn the passing of our beloved Queen and as we anticipate her funeral service tomorrow, we offer this more formal reflection in her remembrance and her honour. We begin with a prayer especially composed for this time. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth, for her faith and her dedication to duty. Bless our nation as we mourn her death and may her example continue to inspire us through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We hear the word of God to us at this time, with first of all a reading from the Old Testament book of Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There is a time for everything and a season for every activity under the heavens, a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to tear and a time to mend. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. God has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the human heart. And our New Testament reading from John's Gospel, chapter 14. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the days following the death of our Queen, I heard a lovely story. You might call it a beautiful imagining. Someone was said to remark on the beauty of the rainbows, which appeared above both Buckingham Palace and Windsor Castle on the day that Queen Elizabeth died. And it is said that God was heard to reply, I don't send my rainbows for just anyone, you know. The Queen was not just anyone, was she? She was an exceptional human being and a remarkable monarch. She lived a long, faithful and exemplary life of service and self-giving. She was not defined by the trappings and wealth of royalty, but by the depth of her dedication to the peoples of our nation and of other nations who had been entrusted to her care. And it becomes ever more apparent that she was defined at her very heart by her faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because of the reality of the Queen's own personal faith, the many services being held at this time in her remembrance and her honour have an additional reality. We celebrate with gladness the knowledge that her service to others sprang from her understanding of the nature of her servant King and ours, Jesus Christ himself. We honour our Queen with our prayers, knowing that she too had a life of prayer, which undergirded her character and sustained her even in the darkest times. Perhaps most of all, we celebrate her life and express our sorrow at parting in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life. For that is the hope that she had. That lovely and familiar reading from Ecclesiastes, so apt in its testimony to a long and fruitful life, reminds us that we are created not for this world alone, God has placed eternity in our hearts and our rightful destination is to be with him. The Queen had, without any doubt, embraced our Lord Jesus Christ as her Saviour and her King. What we witness at this time of sadness is the end of her amazing story here. What we cannot yet see but one day we shall understand, is the beginning of her story in eternity. On the night before he died, Jesus promised his friends that he was going ahead to prepare a room in heaven for them. The way to that eternal home was through him, to walk in his footsteps in this life would mean to walk home with him. Later, the disciples would understand that it was the death and resurrection of Jesus which opened the way to the heavenly home prepared for all who love him. There can be no doubt that the Queen chose to walk the way of Jesus Christ in this life. There can be no doubt that on Thursday the 8th of September 2022, Jesus took her home to be with him. We rightly make much of our Queen's exemplary life and conduct. I believe it would be her prayer for us that we should also look beyond her to the rock on which she built her life, the Lord Jesus Christ himself. For it is by faith in him that we receive God's promise of our own place in his eternity, where we, as our beloved Queen now does, may look on the face of Jesus, the King of Kings. Amen.
We're going to listen now as Chloe sings what is believed to be among the Queen's very favourite hymns. Thank you, Chloe. So let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bless your holy name for all that you have given us in and through the life of your servant, Queen Elizabeth. We give you thanks for her love of family and her gift of friendship, for her devotion to this nation and the nations of the Commonwealth. For her grace, dignity and courtesy, and for her generosity and love of life. We praise you for the courage that she showed in testing times, the depth of her Christian faith, and the witness she bore to it in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Sovereign Lord the King and all the royal family that you might reassure them of your continuing love and lift them from the depths of grief into the peace and light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the funeral service of our Queen tomorrow, for all who lead and participate in that service, that it may bear true testimony to her leadership and her servant heart, and above all, true testimony to you, her inspiration and her rock. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now 
for our own community. We remember before you anyone who is unwell or in any kind of need. We remember before you those who have died and those whose anniversary of death falls at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And the words of the poet John Donne, bring us, O Lord God, at our last awakening into the house and gate of heaven, to enter into that gate and to dwell in that house where there shall be no darkness nor dazzling, but one equal light, no noise nor silence, but one equal music, no fears, nor hopes, but one equal possession, no ends nor beginnings, but one equal eternity, in the habitations of your majesty and glory, world without end. Amen. And let us gather up all our prayers in the words that Jesus himself taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. After the blessing, Chloe will sing a wonderful hymn in celebration of the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over death itself. May the Lord be with you. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king and the commonwealth, and all humankind, peace and concord. And to us and all his servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us this day and forevermore. Amen.